I'm Nicole Rose Gellarmino. I'm a teaching artist. Welcome to my workshop on soft drawing, also known as drawing with thread or embroidery. We tend to think of paper and pencil as drawing materials, but there are lots of everyday materials we can use to draw with. Have you ever carved your name in the sand with your toe? Have you ever, have you ever run zigzag down the sidewalk instead of straight? Have you ever arranged stones or toys in interesting lines? Have you ever wiped lines into a fogged up mirror or window with your finger? Those are all examples of drawing. Today, I will show you how to make soft drawing, also known as drawing with thread, also known as embroidery. Here's what you'll need. You'll need some fabric. You can cut up old shirts. You can use fabric that's printed on it or has paint stains on it or has been drawn on it. You can use an old handkerchief. You'll also need an embroidery hoop so you can keep the fabric taut. Um, you can buy, um, this is a wooden one with a screw on it that you can buy from um, a craft supply store or you can make one out of a plastic container that's round. There's a link to uh, create this DIY embroidery hoop in the notes below. You'll also need uh, embroidery thread, regular thread, um, embroidery floss. Um, you could even use dental floss. You can use yarn. You can use thin ribbon. You can use twine or string of any kind. And finally, you'll need to have a darning needle or an embroidery needle. Um, these types of needles are much thicker um, and they're e it's easier to get um, thicker floss or ribbon or, or yarn into these needles. Um, they make plastic ones also that kids can use and even metal ones with uh, pretty dull tips that are safe for, uh, for, for toddlers even. Um, but they're much bigger than your, your average needle. And finally, you'll need some scissors. Some optional materials you may want to have on hand are um, scrap, or watercolor paints, or paints of any kind actually will work. They don't need to be fabric paint. Markers, any kind of markers will do. Um, beads or buttons or chunks of larger pieces of ribbon or scraps of fabric, even scraps of paper, um, found flowers, to install the fabric in the embroidery hoop, you're going to take apart the two rings by carefully um, untwisting the screw just a little bit. Then you're going to take the inner smaller ring with no screw. You're going to place it down and put the fabric on top of it. Then place the larger hoop and fit it around the smaller hoop so that they're, they fit together like a puzzle. Then you're gonna screw in that screw as tight as you can. And sometimes after I've done that, the fabric is um, might be loose in some places, so I'll just gently pull, making sure to keep those two rings, those two hoops um, fitting neatly together. If you're using a DIY embroidery hoop made out of a plastic container, it's the same concept except um, so you're putting down the smaller ring and then you're placing the fabric over it and then you're taking the bigger ring and snapping it on. So you don't need to screw it on, you just need to snap it real tight on there. Go all the way around and squeeze it together. Before you cut your yarn, your string, your embroidery floss, you're going to want to measure it against the length of your arm and then double that. So your yarn or string should be twice the length of one arm. Now threading um, your needle is gonna be pretty hard because the yarn is unlikely to fit through the eye of the needle. The eye is the opening. So what I do is I get a small piece of embroidery floss or really any kind of very thin floss or even some thin thread and I um, 
hold it like a loop and I just push a loop of the thread into the eye of the needle and I pull it out just a little bit, not all the way. I don't pull it out all the way. So just a loop is peeking through the eye of the needle and then I take that yarn and I stick it into the loop just a little bit, not all the way, just a little bit. And then I pull the loop back out the way it came in. And then that thread actually threads the yarn for me. So now the yarn is in the eye of the needle. Then I'm gonna take the two ends of that piece of yarn and line them up and make a tie on the end or a knot rather. I'm gonna knot the end once and then twice. Now I don't have to worry about my yarn coming out of the needle. And straighten it out so that both ends are the same length. To begin your drawing, push the needle through the back of the fabric. You want that little knot to be on the back where no one can see it. And then pull that string all the way until the knot stops on the back of the fabric. Then push the needle through another location through the front and pull the string all the way out. And then push from the back to the front. And pull the string all the way. Then from the front to the back. And pulling all the way. So you always push the needle into the side that it just came out of. You'll notice that my stitches are lining up. So I am um, sewing my stitches in a line. That's called a running stitch. When you arrange your stitches in a line, it creates a line. Now each stitch is straight, so if I want to make a curved line, I have to arrange a bunch of individual small straight lines in a curve, kind of like a broken line or a dotted line. Now you don't have to stitch in a line. You can stitch in all different directions and see what happens. Now I've created a shape by arranging my straight little stitches in a curved line to make a circle. Now I'm gonna continue with the same piece of yarn, stitching it back and forth in a zigzag line. Straight zigzag lines that are very, very close together. I'm still pushing the needle through the same side that it came out. So it goes into the back, out the front, into the front, and out the back. Let's see what happens as I continue. As I continue to make these long zigzag stitches close, very, very close together, side to side, side to side, they're so close together that they start to fill up this shape and create a solid area of color. That's called a satin stitch. Before you run out of thread or yarn, be sure to leave enough behind that's still attached to the needle so that you can um, tie it. 
So I'm going to cut this yarn right here and tie two knots, one on top of the other, to ensure that it doesn't come apart. In the 1960s, artists began introducing thread and fabric, usually thought of as craft materials, into contemporary art to show in galleries and challenge the viewer's expectations. Sushitra Matai is a living artist with roots in India and the Caribbean. She lives and works in Denver and Paris. In this artwork, the little girl embroidered in brown threads appears to be fading into or out of view, blending with the rose and white background. Her innocence is marked as divine by the sequined gold halo and blue rays of thread. The dress pattern called gingham dates back to the colonization of Malaysia. Matai blends images and materials to tell the story of people and cultures who have been ignored. In the artwork survival mode, Puerto Rican artist Elsa Maria Melendez has stitched silk screens of birds arranged in the whirling shape of a hurricane. The words survival mode are embroidered in red and black cord over the black and gray field of roses. This is the third artwork Melendez created in a series about the experience and the aftermath of Hurricane Maria that heavily impacted Puerto Rico. Seeing the artwork of Sushitra Matai and Elsa Maria Melendez might give you ideas on extending this project. Try drawing or painting on the fabric before you or after you sew. If you don't plan on washing the drawing, it doesn't have to be special fabric paint. Try pushing the needle through small fabric scraps, paper scraps, beads, or flowers. Try adding additional ribbons or yarn by tying, knotting, and braiding. Experiment. When you've finished, remove the drawing from the loop, display it, and admire your work. This video was made in partnership between myself, Nicole Rose Gellarmino, and the Luther Burbank Center for the Arts. If you enjoyed this video, return next Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. for another Let's Be Creative video.